Hello, my name is Riot from the Codex team. And in this video, I want to talk about sorting and the different ways in which you can look at your cards in Codex. So let's jump right into it. Um, let's say I have a deck here, the animation work deck. It contains a couple of tasks which we want to tackle. And um, you can see it, they are already laid out in a specific order. In this case, uh, they are sorted by their priority. One thing that's really interesting uh, about Codex is that when you compare it to a Kanban tool, in Kanban tools, uh, different statuses are represented by columns uh, on a board. And this makes it so that they are a bit rigid uh, in terms of when you want to look at the information in a different way. Maybe you have a different role on the team or you are in a specific context and you want to see, look at the cards in a different way. And that's kind of difficult with a, a Kanban board. But it's really easy with Codex where our goal is to allow you to slice and dice the cards however makes sense most at the moment. So in one case where you can see this is uh, in our sorting options. So I have the cards in here. I can see this card is already done. These other cards are still um, assigned uh, and to be done. But I can also look at this information in a different order. For example, I can just sort by effort. Um, I can sort by status. Like I said, uh, this card is done, all the other ones assigned. If there would be block cards in here or in review cards, I could also see this. I can also sort by tags. I can choose to, to, uh, to sort by project tags or by personal tags. Tags are probably a, um, <laughs> a topic in, in themselves, but really quickly, the difference between project tags and user tags is that project tags are kind of officially sanctioned, officially used projects, uh, tags by your project. So you can administer them, them yourself. It's not something that uh, we give you. I'm, we might have uh, sensible defaults, but in general, the idea is to customize them for the project that you are dealing with and come up with a good taxonomy, a good set of tags which represent your project. And the project tags makes it so that really simply if somebody mistypes or accidentally uses a synonym or the wrong tag um, because the project tag is highlighted and laid out in a, a certain way um, those errors mistakes are really easy to catch a big problem uh, on other tools that i used where people would for example instead of writing the official tag bug they would write bugs or issue or problem and uh, that would cause problems in itself so project tags are kind of our way for helping you, you uh, maintain a good tag structure. I can also choose to sort by manual, which means uh, in this sorting option, I get to manually lay out the cards in whatever way makes sense. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense for this specific use case with tasks. This is really useful for if you're using kind of like a wiki structure or a manual um, or a open deck where you want your visitors or other team members to see the card in a really specific order. You can also sort by owner, um, by milestone, by the time they were last updated or by their creation date, by the title, um, by the type of changes that I haven't seen yet. So if there's a notification in the system about a conversation that I need to catch up on, uh, or there was a new card added to the deck, I can also sort by these type of changes. In this case, since I'm all caught up on the project, um, there are no out <laughs> outstanding changes. I can also sort by time tracked and by the due date. Um, video about due dates, just recorded it, so make sure to check that out too. So this is the simple stuff. Now let's get more into the fancy stuff. Let's say again, this is a deck where I want to that I want to lay out in a specific order and I want to apply this menu uh, sorting option and I want to make sure that other people that visit this deck get to know about that there is this preferred sorting option or if I'm using a open deck I want visitors of our open deck website to always see this specific manual order within this deck and I can do that easily by just clicking the star icon here at the top and this makes it so that when people come to this deck, this sorting option will be applied by default. They are still free to change the actual sorting order by using the sorting options. And then they can return to the default option by clicking 
this button here. This also works, of course, not only with the manual option, but uh, with whatever uh, sorting option that I want to use. In general, your sorting options are stored on a per user basis. So if I have a certain way in which I would like to look at a deck and I change the sorting options in there, when I go to another deck and I come back, the sorting options will still be maintained and remembered in the way that I preferred them. Other people will have their own uh, sorting options. So if other people by default visit a deck that I recently looked at and changed the sorting option, my sorting option won't be applied to them. They will keep using their preferred sorting option. And again, if I like to share my sorting option, one way to do that is by using the star icon and setting a preferred uh, way of sorting this deck. Another thing that you can do with sorting. So by clicking this, uh, by setting a sorting, I set the primary, primary sorting option. But maybe I'm also interested in digging even further and setting a sorting option for those options where the primary, my general sorting option is yielding the same values. Make, sounds complicated, but actually you just have to click control and then click on another dimension. For example, effort or owner or milestone or multiple at once. And you can see the, the way and the order in which these cards are updated in real time. And now I have a complex sorting option here where the primary sorting dimension is priority, then milestone, then last updated. So this allows me to dig pretty deep if I'm a producer on the team and I really want to make sure I stay on top of what's happening and where the cards uh, which state there are, um, I can use this. These sorting options are available inside of decks and also inside of milestones, of course, and also search results. So all, all over the place. Um, not all the options are always available. For example, the manual order doesn't make sense when you are in uh, search results, but it should be pretty intuitive. And then the la final thing that I want to show you about sorting is you can also choose the compact option. So by default, we get these so-called swim lanes by which we group um, your cards. In this case, by priority, because that's what you chose. What's nice about swim lanes is that they are pretty cool for, for drag and drop because I can just grab a card here and drop it in, uh, drop it in another swim lane and it will automatically apply what makes sense at the moment. So for in this case, this no priority card, I dragged into the must have area and it applied the top priority to them. If I'm not interested in this usability and I, I just want to save vertical space and just see at all the, look at all the cards uh, right next to each other, I can choose the compact option. And then we won't show you the swim lanes. We still show you this information, which says the, the amount of total effort uh, within that uh, area and so on. But we won't show you the, the swim lane titles and group your cards for you. And that's all to know about sorting in Codex. Let me know if I missed something or if you have more questions. Um, otherwise, make sure to subscribe and like this video to let me know that you're interested in more videos and so that you don't miss uh, new videos. And that's all for this video. Until the next one. Bye.